the realization that we should turn this into a separate entity didn't come immediately. We just wanted to do something together. That was the driving force behind it. It became more and more clear to us that this is neither Robin nor Rexop. It's something else. We met in, I think it was in Bergen in 2007. And Bergen is obviously the home turf of uh, Turbun and Mosef back in Norway. And we somehow managed to trick Robin into coming over to do a track together with us. I didn't feel like I had an album in, in me, you know, an album of my own. I was really in Bergen to just experiment. And we did that. And Monument became this maybe first track that felt like, oh, this is something else. We, we'll put it on its own feet. Make a space for my body. Dig a hole. I was in London a couple years ago and I saw these statues by an artist called Juliana Siquera Leite. And she had poured clay into these wooden boxes and she dug herself into them, one from the top and one from the bottom. Then she filled these spaces with a material and she made them into statues. They stayed with me for a long time and we started writing on these lyrics that were about uh, that almost physical feeling of defining maybe who you are and what you want to do with your life. There's something very fragile about voices that are not man-made, like a metaphor for, you know, what is actually human, like the defects and the weirdness and the things that don't really make sense and how this machine is trying to sound human but is not really. The starting point is a toy for kids that can say certain words. Playing with the syllables of their pre-programmed or pre-recorded words, we can basically make the robot say things it shouldn't say. We do have a fascination for technology. We love sci-fi movies when we are kids in the 80s. The music that catches our ears and fuels our imagination is electronic music. We bought drum machines, synthesizers. We have lived with the changes in music technology throughout the years, from the early 90s until now. For us, it's like a good pencil for a drawer. If you find the right tool, you can make your vision come through. We have never expressed technology through music. It's more of um, the best pencil we could find. I want you to. It started from these, these chords that Torbjörn and Svein had made and sent me a while ago. Dun, dun, dun. That little hook, if you will. We wanted to write something that was strict on those notes. Like, dun, uh, uh. But you're so limited, and then we just said, okay, let's have a two-syllable word. <laughs> and then it was, do it. It just became like insanely catchy. <laughs> you said an accidental pop song, and I think that's, that's a nice uh, way of describing how it happened. It's an old thing, old, but one of the earliest things we did. Mm -hmm. I think it is a embodiment of the, a, a common thing that Robin has in her music and that we have in ours. Namely, the sort of, there is a certain beat, a certain drive, and, but the theme, the, the things that are being sung about are a bit sad, or melancholy almost. And uh, it's that kind of a song. I think. It's very sad. It is sad. It's the really dreamy part of the album. It's the end. It's the after hours. It's basically what we did the day before. Do it again, I think. Or maybe the day after. Uh, yeah, the, the, after. <laughs> the Idle Hour Club is something that is it's a place that is very special for the three of us. Yeah. It's a condition and a place. I love working with Sven and Torbjörn because it's very open and it's very fluid and they get their head around very delicate details and big emotions. It's both this very qualitative way of thinking about arrangements, but also on this project we've let ourselves go a little bit as a group and discovered things together. 